Hello, my name is Daniel Wincott. I'm a professor of law and society at Cardiff University and a CITP researcher. This presentation is about COVID-19 vaccines, trade and policy. Very quickly after the pandemic hit, um, a number of companies uh, started developing vaccines against it. And there was no certainty that it would be effective, but vaccines were developed very quickly and many were successful. Vaccine production capacity was also scaled up fast. This is not a trade policy as usual story, but it illustrates some key points about vaccine nationalism, the idea that vaccines are a measure of uh, national success or associated with a particular country, trade in machinery and inputs for vaccines, and vaccine diplomacy, COVAX, which is a, a co collective uh, um, attempt to procure and supply vaccines to poorer countries by uh, countries in Europe, although um, President Trump's America stayed out um, countries in Europe and North America, uh, and also um, uh, charities uh, and coordinated by the World Health Organization and uh, how that uh, worked in trying to vaccinate the world's poor. If we start with what happened in the UK, Oxford University started developing a COVID vaccine uh, very early on. The UK government quickly became involved. Uh, they blocked a, an agreement with Merck, a big US-based um, pharmaceutical company uh, because of concerns that President Trump's approach was a kind of America first approach and vaccines might not get to the UK um, until the US had been vaccinated. And they were then involved in a deal with AstraZeneca, a, a, an Anglo-Swedish company, um, and they insisted that uh, the UK would get um, supplied with vaccines produced uh, by the company uh, first uh, before they were supplied to other countries. The UK government created a vaccine task force in April 2020 and appointed the private sector um, venture capitalist in the pharmaceutical area, Kate Bingham, as its chair in May. The vaccine task force could control of the UK government's entire vaccine strategy, development and manufacture, procurement and rollout plans. We're going to focus on procurement um, as well as AstraZeneca. They procured a range of uh, vaccines, buying hundreds of millions of doses in advance, uh, including for Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, two new mRNA vaccines, uh, and Janssen, a Johnson & Johnson company, Novavax, Valneva and Sanofi. Um, not all of these vaccines succeeded. Uh, the Sanofi vaccine was uh, not successfully developed in the early stages. And although Valneva did produce a viable vaccine, the UK government actually cancelled its contract with Valneva. And given that both of these companies are French companies, there was some tension between the uh, French government and the UK government about the approach that they that they took. Um, but Pfizer, BioNTech, AstraZeneca were the mainstays of the initial vaccine rollout, and Moderna played a big role um, subsequently. So this strategy was astonishingly um, successful. Uh, if we turn to the vaccine manufacturing process, I think the critical point here, if you look at the middle column of this um, diagram, is that there are lots and lots of inputs to vaccine manufacturing, capital equipment, raw single-use materials, pharmaceutical ingredients. They're also important for later stages of the manufacturing process and the distribution process. And critically, these goods continue to be traded uh, and all the vaccines that were developed depended on trade in these goods throughout the uh, pandemic period. In fact, some of these goods were in short supply, bioreactor bags were hard to get at certain points, and that slowed down vaccine production. Uh, and lipids, particularly uh, lipid um, uh, nanoparticles, which are critical to the um, mRNA vaccines, were also in very short supply. Uh, uh, so we've got this kind of paradox that we have vaccine nationalism, but also underpinning it a lot of trade between countries. Uh, if we look at where vaccines are manufactured, um, you can see that they're concentrated in North America and Europe. There's also vaccine production in Russia and China uh, and some very important uh, vaccine manufacturers in middle income countries, especially India, whose Serum Institute was a very major vaccine producer before the pandemic and was involved in producing large volumes of the AstraZeneca uh, version of the AstraZeneca va vaccine. Um, uh, this pattern of concentration in um, vaccine production is also then reflected in 
and who got vaccinated at what stage. This is an economist intelligence unit map, which shows that uh, the US and Europe was vaccinated early and uh, other parts of North America, Russia, uh, using their own vaccine uh, called Sputnik V, uh, were vaccinated relatively early as well. Um, and then uh, uh, other places slightly later and uh, large parts of the horror world, and particularly Africa, remains to be vaccinated fully even, even now. Uh, so there's a question about how effectively um, COVAX actually worked uh, um, in uh, by mid August uh, 2021. They promised to deliver to uh, 600 million vaccines, uh, but it actually only managed to supply 200 million. Um, part of that may be uh, to do with vaccines being diverted. So when there was a COVID outbreak in India, the Serum Institute's output was diverted from export by the Indian government for use locally. Um, and you see kind of patterns of countries giving priority first to their own populations and uh, uh, the poorer parts of the world really left behind in the process. Um, so... Uh, we see that COVAVAX, a mix of high-income countries, uh, big companies and charities, didn't manage to meet global vaccine need. And we need to ask the question whether wealthier countries should have prioritized domestic populations over vaccinating the world. And we have this paradox that vaccines use equipment and inputs that are traded around the world, but governments think about national vaccines. So, uh, you know, the UK government was very proud of the AstraZeneca vaccine, talked about it a lot. Um, the French government, on the other hand, was um, concerned about uh, 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 the lack of success of its famous Pasteur Institute in developing a vaccine and, and, and not producing very successful vaccines elsewhere. Um, we also need to think about how uh, countries like Russia and China promoted their vaccines, you know, uh, China, although it hasn't vaccinated its own population particularly well and it's kept mRNA vaccines out, it hasn't chosen to use them. Uh, it, it produced a couple of vaccines that were used very heavily, for example, in Chile uh, to achieve an early uh, successful vaccination there. And the Russian uh, uh, Sputnik V vaccine was actually bought by some European countries, some EU countries, which weren't allowed to buy vaccines where there were collective agreements with the EU, um, but did uh, uh, purchase Sputnik to augment their local supply. Countries like Austria uh, and Hungary did that. So there are some interesting questions here, which I hope will help uh, 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 your uh, deliberation on these uh, topics and deliberation on trade policy more generally. Thanks very much for listening.